Can you hear me? Okay. Oh. Two weeks ago, I was on the top of a roller coaster, and uh, for a few seconds, uh, this is uh, the, the situation, the, the feel that I, I uh, <laughs> inside me, and uh, uh, every, uh, every uh, time I start a new talk and a new workshop, uh, this is my, uh, my sensation, so uh, I need a little boost to, to start, so. <laughs> Th thank you, and... Uh, and welcome, uh, I, uh, I am Valerio Fisolo. Um, I'm the um, 3D uh, lead artist uh, inside uh, Protocol Reply, that is uh, uh, my company uh, in, uh, in Turin, in Italy. And um, it's my eighth time here in the Blender conference. Since uh, 2012, I don't usually uh, take uh, more photos, so this is the only one pics that uh, I have for the since the first uh, conference, uh, I was here with uh, my uh, colleague mate uh, in, uh, in the New uh, Year's uh, with the project uh, from uh, 3D printing and uh, uh, configurator uh, and C CGI animation and visualization. So um, this year I'm here to present you uh, my uh, the hour with the, with the team uh, project that uh, is, um, is this the, the title of the presentation, so it's a fabric, a predictive fabric design. So I, uh, uh, what it means, uh, predictive fabric design is uh, the project to uh, allow us to create uh, rendering or a texture of fabrics uh, before they, uh, they are woven. Uh, so, um, I don't know how to explain. I, have you seen uh, a texture uh, of, uh, of a fabrics made by a substance designer or something similar? So, okay, uh, this is not good for, for this, time, uh, for this uh, kind of market because uh, uh, this type of texture is, uh, is fake and uh, is very uh, ap approximative. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> and uh, uh, and is not physically correct. So. Uh, our goal is to um, go deeper and create uh, a texture that, that is uh, physically, uh, physically correct. Uh, so what's the problem uh, in, uh, for, for, the, for our customer? Um, fabric designers are very fast in, uh, in the phase of creation of the, of the fabrics inside the CAD software. And, uh, but they uh, need to um, uh, wait one month uh, to see the real patch uh, that, uh, uh, that of the prototype uh, because the, the industry is very slow. So for, uh, uh, for woven a, a little patch of fabric, they wait uh, more than one month. After that, uh, for digitalize the, uh, the preview uh, with, uh, with Zoo or uh, similar technology, uh, they need to, to wait the real, uh, the real patch uh, and after that uh, do the photo shooting to the, to the patch. Uh, so the goal is very simple, so it's uh, the reduce the time to mark that uh, of this, uh, of this pr process. And, um, we work on our solution for reduce the, this phase, and uh, that involved uh, the 8 85 percent of the entire uh, process. Uh, as I say, uh, uh, we are working on a natural approach uh, that is very similar to a simulation. Um, in that way, uh, we have the 100 uh, percent of the control of, uh, of the fabrics uh, deeper to the uh, dimension and the color of a single fiber of the of the wool. The fabric have uh, three basic uh, elements uh, that are uh, colors of the fiber, uh, the the yarn and um, the weaving. So the structure of the of the fabrics. So the the color is uh, simple. Uh, we. Um, 
uh, taken from fiber the the color with the, uh, uh, an instrument of uh, as a colorimeter and uh, the difficult part uh, of this um, uh, of this approach uh, is to uh, show uh, on the monitor the real color that I uh, catch uh, with uh, with my uh, my tool, uh, but uh, that not involve Blender, so is another uh, is another part of the project. Um, but uh, finally, we arrived inside Blender, so how we how we have um, uh, reproduced the the real uh, the real yarn inside Blender. Uh, thanks to the uh, animation node and um, also a uh, part of uh, Python script. And um, the project actually is developed in uh, 2.79 because it started in uh, 2018. Uh, I hope next year to uh, migrate on uh, 2.8. Um, in this shot, you can see how the simulation uh, of a single yarn uh, is uh, managed by the animation node uh, that uh, are fed by external parameters uh, that arrive from, a from uh, our platform. And um, these parameters are a number of twists, uh, the verse of the, of the yarn, uh, the number of wool uh, fiber that, uh, that are inside the, the section of the yarn. So, uh, for example, uh, this number define also the, sec the, uh, the, the diameter of the section of the, of the yarn. So it's very um, microscopic uh, approach to the, uh, to the problem. Oh, this is, a, is the first step of, uh, of approximation. So, uh, when the yarn is setting, uh, we do a step of uh, for us, uh, reduce uh, the um, the resources that uh, uh, for uh, for the final render, and uh, we bake it uh, in the form uh, form maps. And um, actually, we don't have uh, uh, an uh, a solution uh, faster than a Blender internal, uh, and uh, we use uh, the the bake system of Blender internal for uh, uh, catch four maps uh, at this resolution in less than ten seconds. So the one of the issue of the of two point eight uh, is this. <laughs> And um, after that, we use that map to create a shader to apply uh, uh, on a mesh that uh, is less defined uh, than the previously, uh, because uh, it's only a cylinder. Uh, but uh, the, the base mesh uh, are, um, are made by uh, eight quad, and all the rest uh, is, uh, is uh, procedurally generated by a modified stack. And uh, this is... Uh, uh, a view of the of the step uh, of uh, our modifier, and uh, at the same time we use uh, this approach for generate uh, uh, the spool. Uh, so uh, the um, the yarn uh, is too dark. Okay. Uh, the yarn is one that is uh, uh, wrapped uh, to the cardboard uh, with uh, with a curve. And uh, so we can create uh, something more realistic than a single yarn. And uh, in this case, uh, we use animation node to, uh, to change the code and uh, the, uh, the name of the, of the yarn uh, for, for every each render. Uh, in our database, uh, there are more than uh, six, no, two, 2,000 um, uh, yarn and uh, more than uh, 6,000 uh, of fabrics uh, generated uh, for year by our customer. So uh, also to uh, automate the, the name of the, uh, of the single yarn is, uh, is important. And the is the, this is the next step. Uh, is uh, similar to the spool. We have the now able to generate the fabrics. Uh, we have done a specific integration with the with the CAD software of um, 
uh, of our customer that now is, uh, can uh, export uh, data dire directly inside Blender. And uh, this data define how uh, the, the fabric uh, is, uh, is made. Uh, okay, actually we, uh, render uh, time is acceptable uh, because we um, uh, render two type of output. Uh, uh, the first one, the preview, uh, is uh, 1K resolution and, uh, and the uh, final, uh, final render is uh, near to the 6K uh, resolution. Uh, time go from uh, 2 to 20, 30 minutes for, uh, for, uh, uh, for render in cycle. And uh, uh, pre-processing uh, of, uh, of this render is uh, very easy. Uh, the 80% of the rendering is pre-processing and uh, uh, at the last, uh, the, the phase of rendering is, uh, is very, uh, very quickly. Um, so it's very easy also in, uh, in terms of, uh, of memory. Uh, so we have uh, decided to use uh, CPU uh, inside our um, cloud uh, render farm uh, because it's uh, more um, safe for the customer. Uh, not uh, uh, every render are, uh, are the same because uh, uh, when I have uh, a lot of fuel, uh, for example, inside my, uh, my fabric, uh, rendering time is very, is very expensive. Uh, but, uh, okay, I jump now inside uh, the platform as the customer uh, see, not uh, inside, not in the backend. Uh, so our customer by a, a graphic front end, um, feed the, the repository of color and yarns. Uh, and uh, all the data that you see on the, on the right uh, can be managed by the Flatmore and define uh, a variable for the final fabrics. So as you see, uh, the fiber size, the yarn, the number of twists. Uh, so uh, every request of rendering are uh, unique. And uh, this is how the, the designer see our platform. So uh, on the left, you can see now uh, how the designer see the fabric in phase of uh, uh, in phase of the, uh, the in the project phase. So it's very uh, it's very ugly and not realistic. Uh, we have uh, had. Uh, uh, something like a render button inside, uh, in, inside the software that uh, uh, transfer the data inside uh, our platform and uh, uh, make, the, make the render. And um, oh, should before when uh, they press render, all the data are processed said, uh, in order to create and manage the 3D scene. And, uh, uh, is is an example of the final render a patch of uh, 22 for uh, 14 uh, centimeter uh, at a uh, resolution of uh, 600 dpi for uh, for printed uh, on, on a paper so a very high resolution uh, with um, uh, technology like uh, with zoo or uh, or photo um, we can make an, we can make an, uh, uh, texture of the of the fabric uh, at uh, a resolution of a two, uh, two K uh, because after that the, the lens uh, is uh, out of focus uh, so is uh, yes I can uh, uh, make a photo of eight uh, K resolution but it's not defined. And uh, with the rendering system, uh, I can uh, uh, go down to 8, uh, 10, uh, or 16K resolution. Um, but uh, it's not very uh, interesting for the, for the customer. Another interesting output uh, of uh, this market uh, are the digital maps for, uh, for digital materials. So we are able to export seamless uh, maps uh, uh, after the render with render layers. 
And uh, so this is another example applied to, an, to a jacket. Uh, and uh, one more complex example uh, of a uh, felted fabric. So the structure is not regular, but it's very uh, mixed. And, uh, and Okay, another, another type of output uh, is uh, an animation of, uh, of the fabric. It's very light. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. We are very near to the goal. Uh, we hope to finish the, the first part of the project until the, the end of the year. Um, but uh, it's only a first uh, step because uh, we are sure that uh, uh, when we pass this uh, checkpoint, uh, many useful tools uh, could be developed in future uh, for this uh, market. And uh, what about the, the roadmap? Uh, uh, we, are, uh, we are next to the finish the first, uh, the first release. Uh, in the first month of uh, 2020, we are um, interesting to migrate uh, the platform to Blender 2.8 uh, with uh, a lot of number of issues. And um, if you are interested about uh, topics uh, uh, like a custom node, an animation node, or a shader node that uh, allow us to see uh, what happened inside the material shader, uh, we are open to discuss. And uh, so, that's all. Thank you, and uh, have a nice day. This is my